realise, of course, that suppression of evidence can be a criminal offence. Quite so, my lord. Very well. Yes, Mr. Darren? Uh, so that Lord Manson, uh, despite the evidence of this diary, which yesterday was lost, but today has been found, you know its contents? Well, I suppose... You wrote it, didn't you? Yes. It throws a very ugly light on your evidence of yesterday, doesn't it? My dear Mr. Darren, do you expect... I shouldn't advise you, sir, to ask me what I expect, or I might tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Just answer the question. Do you still tell us that your evidence is true? Not exactly. Not exactly. You now admit that the evidence you gave on oath is not exactly true. In other words, it is false. My lord, before re-examining, <coughs> I desire to call to your lordship's notice a... Uh, Mr. Beavis, I'm afraid I must deny myself the pleasure of hearing it yes, until lordship. tomorrow morning at... As your lordship, please. Uh, as your lordship, please. Members of the jury, can it be in your places tomorrow at 10.30 a.m.? Another sensation, the cheap newspapers, Darren. I'm afraid I never read the cheap newspapers. No good leading against you, Darren. You have the devil's own luck. No, 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 no. No, weak witness. He broke your man, though. Yeah, improper question. I'd have stopped him if I'd been Lord Chief. <laughs> the old man was as pleased as punch. He almost forgot to bite his nails. <laughs> well, I suppose we shall soon be bowing in court to Mr. Justice Darrant. I thought you were in the running for that, Beavis. Huh? Well, wouldn't have it too much loss of income. No, Darrant here would prefer the dignity, even if he had my income. <laughs> Might prefer to enjoy both. Oh, by the way, Darrant, I saw your young brother yesterday. Oh, yes? Back from Kenya, isn't it? No, road easier. Do well, though? The crop failed. Larry's crops always fail. Good night. Good night. That fellow's young brother must be a thorn in the flesh. Oh, Larry! Have you been waiting long? Thirty-three years, five months. I can't remember the days, hours and minutes, darling. Oh, I love you when you are silly. That means for life, but do you love me when I'm broke? Oh, poor Larry, nothing left out of your allowance. Ah, four whole pennies, all in paper. Poor old Keith, in the running for the bench and settled with a brother who backs nothing but losers. Oh, darling, you do have rotten luck. You never win. No, I won you, though. Oh, Oi! What's your time with old Spedo? <laughs> Salam, Alex! Oh, look there. You can't beat old McPherson. There's something for every occasion. Close your eyes and take a choice. A funeral? There's the urn for grandfather's ashes. <laughs> and a marriage? Oh, everything for a marriage. You were never one to marry. I don't know. I could certainly do with a wedding breakfast just now. Couldn't you? No, but food for tonight. Yeah, <laughs> poor darling. He only gave me a bob on this last time, and it's seen service since. That is it. I can't pop this icon. Just for the week, Larry. I give it to you. It is yours. Please, Larry. Five bob, you old scoundrel. Come on, now, Tony's quick. Let's get to your place before the fun gets any worse. Good evening, sir. Hello, how are you? How's tonight? That's all he knows. Good evening, miss. Good luck, miss. Ah, you Pat. Good luck. Thank you, we've got it. <laughs> ah, there, we're rich. Hello, Tony. Ha-ha, siete venuti a vedere i vecchi amici, eh? They're finer than ever. Eh, si, di fatti, sono belli i miei baffi. E mi fanno ricordare dei vecchi antichi. Randa, you are late tonight. I thought we were in coming. We've got five bob out of old McPherson, and we're going to celebrate. Celebrating? Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha. But you've done nothing else for the last six weeks, you know? I know, that's just what we're celebrating. Benissimo. Then you have just what you want for the occasion. Here we have fagioli as sweet as honey. Salcicce, salami, mortadella, and here we have ravioli alla bolognese. Beautiful, squisiti, raffinati e deliziosi. Ah, ravioli, eh, Wanda? Yes. And some sandwiches? Suppongo che vogliono avere some chianti. No, half a flask, please, Tony. It's been a bad day. Ah, come bello. Ecco, alla vostra salute. Ti tanti auguri. Thank you, sir. Good night, Tony. Buonasera, sì. Here tomorrow. Don't go under there, Larry. Oh, come on. Your luck is my luck, Larry. Mm -hmm. Do they have that superstition in Russia, too? What's wrong? The light. Someone's in my room. Nonsense. You left it on this morning. The door's locked, isn't it? 
No, I lost the key last week. Well, someone's been in to tidy up, that's all. Good evening, Paragaya. I've come home. Who are you? Better ask my wife. I got the excursion boat from Boulogne. Saves a passport. I say to myself, I look up Vanda. It must be three years since I saw my wife. A man needs a home sometimes. I say to myself, perhaps she has some money now. In my country, a wife works for her husband. Don't think I'm angry with you. A girl needs company sometimes. If I hadn't married her three years ago, she'd have starved. But it didn't look well when she ran away. Everything can be arranged. I always say a man's got to pay for his pleasure. Eh? What do you say? Huh? Twenty pounds. Too much. Hmm? Say ten, then. Now, no violence. All we've got to do is talk. Just talk. Everything can be arranged. Keep that! <laughs> Get out, you filthy slut! Wait, you better not! Not murder, Larry. He was bad. We will forget he was ever here. God will not let us suffer. Everything will be as it was before. Put the note down there, Barnes. What the? Larry? What do you want? Oh, come and sit down. What's the matter? Put yourself together and sit down. Oh. 
What is it? I killed a man. What do you mean, a motoring accident? It's true. I've killed a man. Yes, what is it? I locked it, Keith. All right, put them down outside, will you? Why come and tell me this? Whom else should I tell? You know about these things. Shall I give myself up, Keith? Must I? I'll go now, if you say so. No, no, no. no. Mustn't do anything in a hurry. You better tell me all about it. Uh, it's like this. There's a girl. <laughs> it would be a woman. We went back to her rooms this evening. Her husband was there. A brute named <laughs> Wallen. One of those stories. No, it's not like that, Keith. She hasn't seen him for three years. He turned up tonight. He thought he could get money from her. When he went for me, I got him by the throat. And when I let go... Yes? Dead. Well, what did you do then? Well, we sat by it for a long time. And then I, I carried it to an archway at the end of the street. Did anyone see you? No. What time was this? About an hour ago. And then? And then I went back to her. Why? She was lonely and afraid. So was I, Keith. Did you take anything off the body? Yes. This. Put it in the fire. No, 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 why should I be your accomplice? Now, try and think clearly, if you know how. This girl, would she give you away? Never. Would she give herself away, hysteria? No. Did you have anything of hers? Nothing. At your room? Nothing. Uh, a picture. Well, burn it. Any letters? No. Presents? No. How drunk were you? I wasn't drunk. You say you didn't mean to kill him? Of course not. Oh, well, that's something. What made you choose the archway? The first dark place. Did his face look as if he'd been strangled? Did it? Yes. Did you see if his clothing was marked? No. Why not? Why not? My God, if you'd done it. You say he was disfigured. Would he be recognizable? I don't know. How long had this girl lived in this house? Uh, a year. Anyone there know she was married? No. Now listen to me, Larry. When you leave here, go straight home. No seeing her and no coming back here. Do you understand? Yes. Now yes. pull yourself together. The luck's out now. We pawned our luck, she and I. Don't be sentimental. What did you pawn? An icon. An icon? Dangerous. Too easily identified. Get it back tonight. You got any money? Uh, who wouldn't have? Just before quarter day. Here, take this. Go to the pawn shop, then go straight home. Don't talk and don't drink. You're good to me, Keith. I don't know why. Not I. Except that you're my brother. Not much likeness, is there? You were always the first. I'm sorry, Keith. Sorry? You're sorry for her. From now on, let's leave out the pity. We're in this together now. What we both need is courage. 
courage. Salam, Alex. You're too late. Oh, it's you, Mr. Barrett. A uh, popping or a demon? How much? Five bob you had and my little quid pro quo. Five and dripping. <laughs> Two, four, four and six. Four and nine. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <coughs> Excuse me, sir, but have you a cigarette and a match? The one I fear is useless without the other. My friend, you don't look too prosperous. Uh, no, no, no. Now you can keep your money. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm not offended. I've begged often enough. But tonight I may have more in my pocket than you. I'm glad you've had some luck. People talk about the devil's luck, don't they? You wouldn't think it, but I was a minister of religion once. I don't suppose you've seen a failure like that before. I've seen worse failures. I think I'd as soon die as go on living as I do. Tonight, you see, tonight I lost my self-respect. Oh, is that all? I've often wondered how long a starving man could go before he lost his self-respect. Not long. And that's not all. Those whom God loves, he chasteneth. And I don't suffer. I wouldn't mind not suffering if I were you. But if I could suffer a little, I wouldn't feel so... so deserted. Or if it were only yesterday. Don't you ever want to go back like that? I've got a chambers bound. Hello? Oh, good morning, sir. No, Mr. Tarrant has gone to his chambers, sir. Well, not official, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll give Mr. Tarrant your message. Mr. Beavis, sir, his good wishes. He seemed quite upset, sir. We are all very gratified, if I may say so. Yes, yes, yes. If there's more congratulations, tell them there's no truth in it at present. Good morning, miss. Nice morning. Hello, 
There's a gentleman. Gentleman. That is what I say, gentleman. You say gentleman, it's gentleman. In Vienna we say gentleman, and we know a gentleman when we see him. Mr. Darrant is a gentleman. A man who doesn't pay the rent for this room is no gentleman. Is Mr. Darrant in? Two floors up. I haven't seen him this morning. No? Is he not a gentleman? He has a friend who is a gentleman. I have a friend, a lady. Am I a lady? No, you are not a lady. You are only a female. But Mr. Dunn is a gentleman. Gee, gee, gentleman. That is what I keep on saying. Gentleman. Himmel, Christ, Donner, Wetter, Nora, Mars. No reply. There must be. Please ring again. This is his brother. But I must see him. No, no. No, he's too dangerous. Hello? Hello? Listen. You mustn't come and see him under any circumstances whatsoever. You understand? Well, brother, what's the verdict? Transportation for life and a fine of 40 shillings? Well, you can laugh about it now. I must. People weep at weddings, not at funerals. I've decided everything. You must leave the country. There's a boat sailing tomorrow. But wonder, Keith. Well, she can't go with you. I can't leave her here. Well, she can follow later. You can't go together. Do you want the police on her track? Only I can be certain she'll be safe. She'll be safe enough. A girl like that can look after herself. Like that, like what? Look after her, Keith. I love her. Yes, yes, I look after her. Now go to the shipping office straight away. I brought the money. There it is. Where to, Keith? There's a boat sailing for Rio. Rio? They've arrested someone, Keith. Yes, I know. <laughs> that does me, doesn't it? Why? We both know he's innocent. Innocent men don't hang in this country. A bit of luck gives us time. Who is it they've arrested? Well, it was some waster they picked up near the place. I went to the court. Usual procedure. Demanded for a week. What did he look like, Keith? Oh, what does it matter? These people are all the same. No use to themselves or anybody else. A menace to society. Dreadful that lawyer's eye of yours, Keith. Seeing so much and understanding so little. If I'd been in the dock, that's what you'd have said of me. I wonder what he's thinking. Well, it'll do him no harm to be locked up for a week. What will happen, Keith? They'll dismiss the case for lack of evidence. If he's as safe as that, why do you want me out of the way? Well, police inquiries don't end with an arrest. There's the girl to think of. To say nothing of my brother. Shall we put an advertisement in the Times? Mr. Larry Darren, brother of the new judge, is confined to his room. Well, will you go? I must just wait this one week and see him released. But Larry... I'm sorry, Keith. I'll do everything you tell me. Not talk, not drink. Not see one day. But I must wait. Come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't go. My brother's just leaving. Richard. You've forgotten your money. Richard. Is that my bill again, Carl? Oh, please. <laughs> but my wife. My Scottish wife, she does not understand how it can be with gentlemen. Gentlemen, sometimes. All right. 
There goes my security. Have a drink. Thank you, sir. Thank you, best of the Thank you, I drink of your health, Mr. Darrant. Now, I want you all to drink the health of our friend Darrant. I'm putting his name forward to take the place of young Droopy there. <laughs> Darren. Yeah. Good luck, Darren. Good luck. Thank you very much. Now, Swinford, a word for your successor. You're very good health, Darren. Let's hope you'll be in time for the Glove Lane murder, Darren. Something spectacular for your first appearance. I'm afraid murder's not much in my line. I'd willingly leave the limelight to you, be A sordid case. No hint of the more interesting passion. One never knows. Well, something may turn up. Don't you think so, Darren? Well, let us talk about something else. We were talking about Goldwyn Girl and the Newbury Cup. I did more than talk. I, I put on half a crown. <laughs> <laughs> Why, who do you bet with? Ladbrook? That was the unfortunate thing. I gave it to an agreeable little fellow I met outside my newsagents. He never came back. <laughs> Splendid! The Lord Chief Justice of England breaks the law. <laughs> Broke the law? Did I? I suppose I did. It never occurred to me. <laughs> Breaking the law can be a delightful experience. I remember putting a French halfpenny into a chocolate machine, but then the chocolate was stale. <laughs> I once smuggled a book called The Art of Love through the custom, and then my mother confiscated it. <laughs> Some years ago, I travelled from Piccadilly to the law courts by bus without paying. I thought I had no change. But when my clerk met me, I found that I was holding the pennies in my hand, they left me umbrella behind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Darren. Everyone's confessed. What's yours? Well, compared with you people, I'm an innocent man. The upright judge. Quite seriously, that's the trouble about the bench. You sit up there, a half asleep, perhaps. More than half asleep sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the council bothered you. Everyone calls you me lud. It's quite hard at times to realize that you aren't above the law. The law seems somewhere down below at the level of the dock where the poor devil's there. One of your longest summings up, Chief. I never thought there was all that humanity in you. <laughs> like a judge's humour, a very little humanity goes a very long way, eh, Darren? What are you dreaming about, Darren? About a very large helping of tapioca pudding. Well, now Swinford's awake, what about some bridge? What do you say, Drupe? Oh, no trumps. Fifteen pounds, six and eight. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs> The man's a bandit. <laughs> I had two mufflers. Uh, I had four pounds. Mandy got my muffler. I don't think so, Drupi. It was wool, red wool. Good heavens, no, what an atrocity. Your taxi's here, sir. Oh, thanks. Good night. Good night, Chief. Good night, Good night. Delightful evening. Good night, Darren. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Someone's got my muffler. I think so, you have it on, under the silk bag. Nonsense. Uh, you want a wife to look after you, Drupi. <laughs> after a long experience, first at the criminal bar, then upon the bench, I've come to the conclusion uh, that a woman can only be relied upon by one man, the counsel for the prosecution. In almost every murder case that has come before me... Sir, sell a farm, eh, Darren? No, sir, that is not the phrase I intended to use. Where's that muffler? You're wearing it. Hmm? Oh, exactly. <laughs> Good night, Chief. <laughs> Good night, Dennis. Good night. Good night, Darren. Good night. <laughs> Well, good night, Chief. Good night, Chief. You, you coming along, Dan? Yes, I am. Good night, Chief. Thank you so much. Good night, Dan. If you don't mind, I'll step along with you. I'm going some distance. The doctor's ordered me to take exercise. Don't mind, I enjoy it. Oh, thanks, sir. No, it was amusing hearing Manda talk so much nonsense about this murder trial when one knows so much more about it oneself. No, you mean you've been studying the case? Oh, don't you know? I'm briefed for the crown. You've been... Oh, yes, of course, I see. Yes, you've been brief. Not quite such a simple case as they seem to think. Almost too circumstantial. I'm not easy in my mind about it. Now, the motive's weak. I shouldn't be surprised if we found a woman somewhere. As you say, cherche la femme. <laughs> Thanks so much. I think I'll take a cab after all. That must be midnight. Can I give you a... Oh, no, no, of course. Good night. Hoppy, you ought to have been in bed hours ago. 
You having a look too, sir? No, 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 I was just going for a stroll. I had no idea this is the place. A dark spot. Do people sleep here? There's not an arch in London where we don't get him sometime. They found nothing on him, did they? Not a thing. There's a lot of funny folk about here. Greeks, Italians, all sorts. Well, I see they've arrested the man. Well, they've arrested a man. Ah, there's the sergeant. Well, good night, officer. Good night, sir. Larry? Why did you knock? I've waited and waited. I'm a friend of Larry's. You needn't be afraid. Who are you? I am Larry's brother. He has told me. What has happened to him? The arrest? He has not gone to the police? No, no, you needn't worry about that. Larry never thinks about anybody but himself. Will you sit down? Yes, there. His head lay just there. You are... You are fond of my brother? I love him. He is leaving the country. I have arranged it. But the man they have taken. No evidence. And Larry says he will go. He consented only a few hours ago. Oh. Can I go too? Not yet. Too dangerous. But I cannot live without him. Please let me go too. Perhaps later on. I'll arrange it. Now listen to me carefully. This husband of yours, this Wallen. Does anybody here know him? No one. And I only knew him for a week, in Paris, three years ago. He couldn't make you marry him, you know. Starvation could. My father was killed in Russia, and my mother died before I met Wallen. The world can frighten you when you are alone. Why did you leave him? I thought perhaps starvation was better after all. And then I did not starve. I got work here. And then I met Larry. Did anyone see this man come to your house last night? Oh, no. What have you been doing? Waiting. That's madness. You must go back to work tomorrow. Do everything as usual, for Larry's sake. If the police learn about you, they learn about him. Promise? If I had consumption, I would go away. And never let him see me, touch me. Though I can do this, I think. Good. Now look at me. If the worst comes to the worst, and they trace this man to you, can you trust yourself not to give my brother away? You look at me. I've burned everything he gave me. Except this. What's that? His picture. No, I have nothing at all. Yes? Who is there? The outside door's open, miss. Thank you. I didn't know. That's all right, miss. I'll shut it as I go out. Do the police know you? They do not. Oh, very well. I'm going now. Remember, he must not come here, and you must not go to him. Good night, sir. Good night. Forty shillings, Miss Brown, thank you. John Alice, you're seven. John Alice, you're seven.
town number four, sir. John Aloysius Evan. You're John Aloysius Evan? Yes. John Aloysius Evan, your charge was due on the 21st of April. Did feloniously kill and slay one Ludwig Valen? Age 52 at Glove Lane, Soho, with malice of thought. If it please, sir, I appear on behalf of the Director of Public Prosecutions for the Crown. If it please you, sir, I appear for the prisoner. The prisoner may sit down. Thank you, sir. The evidence will seek to establish that the crime was committed by a person wearing gloves. There were marks of fingers on the neck, but no fingerprints. And there was a small abrasion on the side of the neck consistent with the injury which might be caused by the sharp edge of a broken button. We closely established in the evidence that the prisoner pawned a ring, which he later, in a statement to the police, admitted taking from the body at a pawnbroker's close to the scene of the crime. That in his possession at the time of his arrest was a Belgian banknote and a pair of gloves. On the uh, right-hand glove was a broken button, and on the edge of that button, the Home Office analyst, Sir William Partridge, will state he found traces of human blood. On the evidence I shall call, I ask that the prisoner be committed for trial. I call the police officer in charge of the case. I cautioned him, and he made the following statement of his own free will. I did pawn the ring. I took it off the dead man's finger. I ought to suffer. I have done a dreadful thing. Acting on that statement, I went to the house of Alexandra McPherson, pawnbroker. Occupation? Well, I, I oblige my friends. What's the man talking about? Are you a pawnbroker? Yes. Then why not say so? Now, Mr. McPherson, tell us what you know about that ring. Well, the diamonds is paste. Good paste, but... Only paste. No, no, no. Tell us if you ever saw it before. Well, of course I saw it before. Didn't I lend half a nicker on it? What's half a nicker? Dangerous. Uh -huh. Do you see the man who brought you the ring in court? No. No, no, no. no it's the McPherson. Just look round. There. No, no, no. Not at me. I didn't pawn the ring. Nor did his worship. Uh, look around the court, Mr. McPherson. There he is. Are we to understand from all this that the prisoner pawned the ring? That's right, Your Worship. When? Uh, on the night they found the body. Uh, thank you, Mr. McPherson. Uh, will you hand back the ring, please? But it hasn't been redeemed yet. Oh, that's all right. You'll see it again in good time in another court. Very well. Thank you. Stand on. Next witness, Adam Wallet. Madam Wallet. Madam Wallet. Hold the book in your right hand and repeat the oath aloud. Have you identified the body? Is that of your husband? Yes, my husband. When were you married to him? In 1905, in Yesh. Did you live together for long? No, for six months. It was bad. But you did not divorce him? I'm a Catholic. He married many others, but I'm his wife. Did you ever see him again? Yes, three weeks ago. He wanted money. He came to see me. I said, go away, you are bad. He said, you are my wife, this is my home. I said, no, it is my home. Was he living under the same name? He was calling himself Kessler. He said, give me that silver tureen. I said, no, it is mine. The lawyers had told me so. They said that everything... In the uh, thank you, Madam Valen, that will do. Questions? No questions. That is the case for the prosecution. Do you wish to make a statement? The prisoner pleads not guilty, sir, and reserves his defence. You are committed to take your trial at the next forthcoming sitting at the Central Criminal Court. Anything more? Nothing more. The court is adjourned till 2 p.m. Silence, please. Oh, hello, Charlie. Good morning. Hello, sir. We don't often see you at Bow Street. No, as a matter of fact, I'm particularly interested in these circumstantial cases. Now, you ought to be on this one. The whole thing's circumstantial. Of course, they had no right to commit him on such evidence. Well, if there's anything I can do to help... <laughs> you wouldn't come down to Brixton and see the man. Yes, of course I will. Well, thank you. Well, I, I, I'll meet you at your, uh, your chambers at about five. All right. I'm Thanks, sure. officer. Yeah, Larry, it's too late. He's committed for trial. Yes, I know. We can't talk here. Come home. There's nothing to talk about. No jury will convict. You said no magistrate would. I must stop this now. This man is innocent. He talked to me. He wouldn't take my money. All he took were those gloves. Shh. They're trying him for that. Don't talk so loudly. I'm only asking you to wait. Yes, wait for the trial, appeal, petition. 
Then one morning when the clock strikes nine, he's gone. Excuse me, sir. Are you waiting for anyone? No, that's all I think of. Well, beg pardon, Mr. Dunn. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> I suppose it's no good talking about the family. Come, come, Keith. There are only two of us. Why not come out with it? My brother, the judge. That's right, young man. Your brother, the judge. Hello, Manda. How are you? Mind you don't come before him, though. He'll be a hanging judge. He goes on the principle, give me enough rope and I'll hang myself. <laughs> we'll have a good time first. <laughs> Thank you. How long before the old Bailey? Three weeks. Three whole weeks. You can be half across the world by then. Yeah. Nothing to think of for three whole weeks. In three weeks, you can be in Rio by plane to Dhaka, a French boat across the South Atlantic to Perman Buco, another plane to Rio, then the plantation. You can take the girl, too. A home for both of you. She deserves a home. She's not guilty. You'll go? <laughs> How does a rich man treat his girl, Keith? Clothes? Dinners? What on earth are you talking about? I'm a rich man, Keith. A whole quarter's allowance in the bank and only three weeks to live. If you see some gold dust vanishing on the horizon, that's my money. Larry, where are you going? To see Wanda. But you promised. Murderer's promises, Keith. Yes, I will come. Our table, Larry. Tell me you were going away. <coughs> seven days. Oh, it seems like seven years. He said I mustn't see you. The police might find you. Then just now in court, they called Madame Molin. And it wasn't you. You're no more Madame Molin than the Queen. The woman was standing there saying I'm his wife. Is that why you are so happy? Everything is settled now. Is he released? They've committed him for trial. But you are happy. No more thinking, Wanda. No more listening to Keith. No more wondering, is this right or that? Must I do this or do that? <laughs> We've got three weeks. And then? Then, the judge and the jury will do all the thinking. We won't let him hang, will we? No, we will not let him hang. When I was in Africa, I used to think if I could twist a ring on my finger and a genie popped up, what would I ask? First, I would say, put me down in London. Same as usual. Then put a lot of dough in my pocket. Here it is. A whole quarter's allowance, fresh today. Fresh fruit Sunday, sir. Then give me three weeks to spend it all on someone. Who? <laughs> I couldn't have thought of you, George. You two on a diet? Um, uh, that. glory. Okay. If I had twisted that ring, I would not ask for three weeks. I would ask for three months, three years, thirty years. What do people do in thirty years? We'll do it too. We know how long one week has been. Why, we will be quite old at the end of three weeks. In thirty years, people meet, make love, marry, and then they die, I suppose. Together. That's everything. Yes. Everything. your mother? Now we will buy you a trousseau too. Is there 
anything I can do for you? If there are any comforts in... Uh, please, please, no. I'm very well looked after. They're all so kind to me. I even sleep in the hospital. Are you ill? They say my heart's weak. I don't know. I'm very happy. I don't deserve to be so happy. You see, I... I lost my self-respect the other night. But haven't they told you? I don't want it kept dark. It was a dreadful thing to do. I robbed a dead body. I deserve to die. You won't suffer. You're innocent. But I'm not innocent. I'm guilty. I want to suffer. God may forgive me if I suffer. Nonsense. You must fight. I've told him that over and over again. You can't let yourself die. Why not? Why not? You must have courage. Courage? Ah, yes. That is a Christian virtue. Oh, the sound apple. Happy darling. Oh, I think it's all the lovely things we've done today. Yes, we've still got two weeks and six days. That's 20 times as much ahead of us. Oh, take these, Larry. I had forgotten the coffee. Oh, all right, darling. Go along. I won't. What do you want? Listen, I... I must speak to you. What has happened? Are you as fond of him as ever? More, much more. Then get him to go away. Now, at once. I'll give you money. You will never take him from me now. But I don't want to. You can take Larry away. I'm ruined if he stays. And that poor man? I've seen him. He's, he's mad. He's, he's happy. He wants to hang. There's nothing to be done with a man like that. Larry will not go. He is brave. Brave is as weak as water. He's, he's failed in everything. We love each other. But I... I want to help him. We do not need your help. We are together. And in three weeks? That's years away. Even years pass. And then? We shall be married then. There. The sock is mended. We can strap the bag now, Larry. Wonder. Do stop pretending. In a few hours, they'll start to try him. And we've only been married three weeks. Three weeks, not 30 years, three weeks. And it's over now. Everything's over. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, too. What a wife you are. You would even make yourself out a coward for your husband's sake. You win. Well, go on pretending. Grunlich asked me just now how long we were going to be away. I said three years. He said, was it Rhodesia again? I said, no, this time it was a different place. I've kept you busy, haven't I? I have kept you tidy. These were new socks. Do you remember that day, ages ago? It's no good. We can't go on pretending like this. You know, and I know. I know nothing. The last day of the holidays before school. That awful cloud. Last mendings and the prayer that something might happen. Perhaps the end of the world. The world has never come to an end again since the deluge. What lucky devils there must have been when that rain fell. Lean on it, Wanda. The tight fit. The 30 years in this bag. Look at all the labels. P and O, Royal Mail. <laughs> I was the first man in the bar and every boat. Oh, to be on a ship with you. That would be heaven. And why not? We've got until seven. Seven? Yes, that's about when they'll bring in the verdict, so Keith says. Nine hours before I give myself up. But, but you won't have to. 
They, they'll find him innocent. Not with my luck. But we've got today. Come on. Let's go out to sea. Yes. Oh, yes. Come on, let's... Goodbye, Carl. We're off. Where's your bag? We're coming back for that this evening. So, you will come back then? The bill, Carl. Don't forget the bill. No, no, tonight. We are coming back for the bag. Where are you off to now? We're going to see. We've got to move on. We haven't got long here. You've got as long as we have, ain't you? of the Central Criminal Court. Draw near and give your attendance. God save the king. Put up John the Noisy Seven. May it please your lordship, members of the jury. <clears throat> On the night of the 21st of April last, at a few minutes before midnight, the body of a man was discovered murdered in a deserted archway at the top of Glove Lane. Evidence goes to show that the man had been strangled. Now, the act of murder is an act of darkness. Very seldom in this court is it possible to produce witnesses who have seen with their own eyes so secret a crime. The defense may suggest to you that circumstantial evidence is not conclusive, but in reality, it's the most final form of evidence there is. A man may easily be deceived in what he sees, but circumstantial evidence, tested link by link, is as free from human error as a scientific law. And. Uh, I just want to ask you this once more, for my learned friend endeavour to cast doubt upon a certain portion of your evidence. The cause of death in this case was, in your opinion, asphyxia, due to strangulation. Thank you, Sir William. Now, Mr. Evan, you are a clerk in Holy Orders. For how many years did you serve as curate in charge of St. Benedict's Limehouse? Twenty. To the satisfaction of your bishop? Yes. Until I took to drinking? And then they wouldn't have me anymore. Of course, <coughs> of course they were right. <coughs> Quite right. Of course, since then, your circumstances have not been easy. Not worse than I deserve. Quite. Now, what took you to Glove Lane the night of the murder? The foxes have holes, sir. You mean that uh, you went there to sleep, Mr. Evan? Yes. Now, Evan. How long is it since you possessed a pair of gloves? 
The ones you talk of, um, well, I, I saw a man drop them. Can you describe the man you say dropped these gloves? He was dark, tall, quite young. Oh, one thing I do remember. I couldn't help noticing he called me Alec and went like this. <laughs> now, in your statement to the police, you used these very significant words. I have done a dreadful thing. What was the dreadful thing? I'm glad you've asked me that. I want people to know. It was an awful thing. I don't want it kept dark. What was this dreadful thing? I robbed a dead body. And that was all? All. But you don't understand. I took money. The poor man had a wife. I robbed the living, too. You have a very tender conscience. Do you seriously ask the jury here to believe that this conscience of yours was stirred by the thought of robbing a widow of a few francs? <coughs> yes. Or the thought of having killed a man in cold blood? <laughs> Anyhow, I am guilty. <laughs> That, my lord, concludes the case for the Crown. an eloquent address on the subject of circumstantial evidence. But evidence of that kind is only as strong as its weakest link. And some of the links in this case are very weak. The prisoner has been into the witness box and he has told you of an encounter he had with a stranger near the scene of the crime. How he found the gloves on which this case mainly rests. A figment of the imagination my learned friend has suggested to him. Easy to say, but the life of a man depends upon your answer to this question. May there not be, in fact, such a man? Here you are, sir. If you knock down three, you get your little doll. If you knock down four, you get your whopper. Only one more for the big prize. Win for me, Larry. One more chance, sir. Another go, sir. Here, yeah, don't get your prize, sir. You'll be back one of these days, sir. Where to, Larry? Oh. That's right.
Oh, he is a jolly good fellow. Jolly, you never learn to talk English. Will you start again, you squirrel, about my English? Oh, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Darren, before you go away to New Zealand or was it Jamaica, all your many friends here in London wish to make a little party just as a fine surprise for you. It is very beautiful, beautiful to be young. And it is even more beautiful, beautiful. to be good. And the most beautiful, beautiful thing in the world is to be young and to be good and to be in love. Bravo! Bravo! And so we wish you luck and happiness. May the Lord bless you and ho, ho, ho! Oh, oh, oh. oh thank you. Thank you, Carl. And we have a little surprise for you, too. Oh. Please wonder. The money I owe you, Carl. <laughs> no, what is he? A gentleman. <laughs> God bless you. Wonder. And now let us sing. <laughs> Your brother, he wants you upstairs. Larry. Well, Keith? This sentence. It, it won't stand. I'll see that there's an appeal. No more waiting, Keith. I'm going to the police now. No, 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 for God's sake, listen. You know how I've worked all my life to be a judge. I'm ruined if you give yourself up. Nothing left. I'm sorry, Keith. I wish I could. I'm not so devilishly strong as you. Well, if you won't think of me, think of yourself. And wonder. I've thought of it all right. I've thought of it. A place of our own and the years passing. Growing old together and children. 
Domesticated. I've sneered at the word. It sounds like heaven now. But it's no good, Keith. Call me as weak as water, if you like. But I can't let this little fellow hang. Listen, Larry, I'll... I'll give you anything you ask. <laughs> We've never understood each other, have we? Never mind. You lift me down. People forget a newspaper sensation in a week. Why, they'll be sorry for you. Beavis and the rest. Pitying me. Everyone knows I'm the skeleton in the cupboard. Send him to Malay, Rhodesia, Brazil, anywhere out of the way. Well, this time I'm going further on. No, 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 don't go yet. Give me time. Give me until tomorrow. No more time. An hour, Larry. Give me an hour. You give me one reason why he should hang. One honest reason. You're going? Yes. To give myself up. Thank you. 